the key takeaways from the previous lecture are as follows uh, it is possible to uh, affect a certain transfer of uh, work to the rotor of a turbo machine by means of the change in specific enthalpy of the fluid in the rotor passage or by means of a change in specific kinetic energy of the fluid in the rotor passage or both. The fractional contribution of the change in specific enthalpy to the total specific work transfer is defined as the degree of reaction as indicated here. In addition, in the case of an axial machine, any change in specific enthalpy of the fluid across the rotor passage uh, always results in change in the results in the change in the uh, relative velocity of the fluid uh, in the blade passage. Furthermore, uh, in the case of an axial or a radial machine, any change in relative velocity in the rotor passage uh, determines the change in pressure along the streamline which passes through the rotor blade passage. Okay, so now. Uh, it is clear from this discussion that uh, when work transfer takes place uh, to a rotor, uh, the absolute velocity of the fluid, the relative velocity of the fluid, as well as the blade velocity uh, in the case of a radial machine can change between the inlet and the outlet of the rotor. We have also seen that it is customary to indicate these uh, velocities by means of a velocity triangle since uh, the absolute velocity of the fluid V at any location is the sum, vector sum of the blade velocity plus the relative velocity. So it is imperative that uh, we gain a clear understanding of velocity triangles and uh, also be in a position to interpret velocity triangles and try to get as much information from velocity triangles as possible. So this is what we will discuss next. Next. So here uh, we are uh, given uh, two velocity uh, triangles, one at the inlet to the rotor, one at the exit to the rotor. Let us see how much information we can infer from uh, these two velocity triangles. Now we notice right away that um, uh, u2 is not equal to u1. So the blade speed actually uh, increases from inlet uh, to the exit of the rotor, which implies that the machine is a, uh, a radial flow machine. Furthermore, since u2 is greater than u1, it follows that r2 is greater than r1. So the machine is actually a radial outflow machine. Okay. Next, since R2 is greater than R1, dr is positive. And judging by the magnitude of the relative velocity uh, from inlet to outlet, we can see that C2 is less than C1, which means that dc is negative. And so this term contributes positively to the uh, overall right-hand side. And so uh, dr is positive, uh, dc is negative. So both these things together give rise to uh, dp being positive in this case, which means that p2 is greater than p1. So this corresponds to the rotor of a compressor or a pump. We notice further that uh, at inlet, uh, the relative velocity c1 is perpendicular to u1. And it's clear from this that uh, beta 1, the blade angle at inlet, is equal to 0. Uh, in this particular case, since the machine is a radial machine, this implies that the uh, blade at entry is actually a radial blade. That is, it is aligned in the radial direction. Since beta 1 is the angle that the uh, tangent to the blade profile makes with respect to the reference direction. So in this case, because the reference direction is the radial direction, we call this the uh, we call this a radial uh, blade. Now, in case the reference is the axial direction, beta 1 equal to 0 would suggest that uh, the blade is axial. It's an axial blade. Uh, in case it's an axial machine. Okay. Now, in contrast, if alpha 1 is equal to 0 at, uh, at uh, inlet, for instance, that situation would be referred to as uh, radial entry in the case of a radial machine, and it would be referred to as axial entry in the case of an axial machine. So beta equal to zero uh, would imply that the blade is uh, radial or axial as appropriate, and alpha equal to zero would imply uh, radial or axial entry or exit as the case may be, and depending on whether it's a radial machine or axial machine. 
Furthermore, uh, since the relative velocity c uh, curves away from the direction of the blade speed, notice that the blade speed is in this direction and that the relative velocity curves away from the direction or angular velocity direction, we can infer that the blade is a backward curved blade uh, for this particular case. So here we are again given the velocity triangles at the inlet and exit of a rotor. Uh, it is also said that u1 is equal to u2. So that is also indicated here. So that means that, I'm sorry, that means that uh, it's an axial machine since u2 is equal to u1. And since c1 is not equal to c2, there is a change in the relative velocity in the blade passage. So that means it's a reaction machine. As we have already discussed, this is a reaction machine. Furthermore, since C2, the magnitude of C2 is less than uh, the magnitude of C1, the relative velocity actually decreases in the blade passage, which means the blade passage acts like a diffuser or it's a diverging passage. And so uh, what we are looking at here is actually a compressor or a, uh, or a uh, axial compressor or an axial pump. Again, uh, application of this information to this equation makes it clear that this term is zero because it's an axial machine and dc is uh, negative. So that means this term becomes uh, the overall term contributes positively to the pressure change. So that means the pressure increases in this case. Let's uh, move on to the next example. So here um, we are given uh, once again a uh, velocity triangle at the inlet to the rotor and at exit to the rotor. And it's given that u1 is equal to u2, which means that this is, an, uh, this is an axial machine. It's also clear from the velocity triangle that C2 is not equal to C1, which means that it is a reaction machine. And uh, if we now look at this equation, dr is zero because it's a, an axial machine and C2 is greater than C1, that means dc is positive. So that means this term contributes uh, in a negative fashion uh, to the uh, dp term. So dp is less than zero. This is equal to zero and this entire term is negative. So dp is less than zero, which means that the um, uh, pressure decreases in this passage. C2 is greater than C1 implies that it's a, uh, the blade passage is a converging passage. So the flow accelerates, which means the pressure decreases. Therefore, this is the uh, uh, rotor blade of a turbine. And furthermore, we see that uh, the relative velocity at inlet is perpendicular to the blade direction, which means that beta 1 is equal to 0 in this case. Since this is an axial machine, we refer to the blade at the inlet or the blade profile at the inlet actually is in the axial direction. So it is an axial uh, blade at entry. Okay? So this is an axial reaction machine with axial blade at or axial blade profile at entry. So looking at this velocity triangle, uh, it's indicated that u1 is equal to u2. And furthermore, it's also indicated that c1 is equal to c2. So let's see what uh, information we can glean uh, from this uh, velocity triangles. So u2 equal to u1 implies that it is an axial machine. c2 equal to c1 implies the following, since it's an axial machine, dr is zero. And since it is given that C2 equal to C1, dc is equal to zero. So that means dp is equal to zero for this rotor, which means that the pressure remains constant and there is only a change in direction of the fluid. So that means it's an impulse machine, okay? Is it an impulse uh, type of work absorbing machine or an impulse type of work producing machine may be determined by looking at the uh, tangential component of the absolute velocity. Notice that V theta 1 is in this direction here and V theta 2 is 0 because V2 is perpendicular to U2. So V theta 1 is positive, V theta 2 is 0. So that means that from oil turbine equation, the work is uh, w dot is positive so this is an impulse axial impulse turbine so this uh, discussion makes clear how much information uh, can actually be uh, presented or associated with velocity triangles between the inlet and outlet of a rotor and uh, the students should actually go through this very carefully and make sure that they are able to interpret the velocity triangles given in any particular situation and draw these types of inferences even before doing any calculation.
what we will do in the next uh, couple of lectures is to work out examples where we try to draw velocity triangles based on the given information in the in the example and try to do some calculation